Welcome back, Mr. Wakefield here, going on into section 9.2 now. And uh, this is, a, I want to make sure, first of all, before we get started, that we don't confuse what we have here in 9.2 with what we just did in 9.1. 9.1, we learned how to find uh, either a square root or a cube root if it had the little three next to to the, the or uh, above the V part of the radical symbol there. Uh, we actually learn how to find those roots, okay? Uh, what we're going to be doing now, though, is we're going to be simplifying radicals. And I want to make it clear that it sounds like it's the same thing, but it's not, okay? I really want to make sure you don't get the two things confused. Here we're finding the root. We're finding the square root and the cube root. Here we're simplifying the square root of the cube root. Not the same thing, although occasionally it comes out the same answer. Normally it doesn't, so we got to understand the difference. Okay, you can see here that 24 is not one of those perfect one of those perfect square numbers, like you know, like a 16 or 25 or 36. Though the types of numbers you saw here in this uh, previous section from 9.1 that I'm pointing at right now. Okay, but um, it does look kind of like the problems at the bottom of 9.1, okay, where we put it into our calculator. So th that's the other thing I'm concerned about. Okay, I don't want you to think that you can just put this in our calculator because it looks similar to these problems where the number is not a perfect square number. Okay, 5 and 39 are not, you know, perfect square numbers like, like these numbers are here, okay, uh, where you can figure out the square root of these, okay. Um, real easily. Um, notice here in 9.1 it said approximate each square root to the nearest tenth. Okay, so when they say that they're trying to tell you to use your calculator to find a decimal answer and then you round it off to the nearest tenth and that's what we did. Again, simplifying is a different story. Okay, one of the reasons why it doesn't make sense to do this right here when they ask you to simplify is because when you do the calculator thing it gives you a very complicated answer that, that you actually round it off okay so number one it's not simple and number two uh, in order to make it simple you had to round off and like I've told you before you should never round off unless the problem asks you to and this problem doesn't ask you to okay so uh, basically that's the reason why simplifying a radical is not in any way similar to the last section. So we know what it doesn't mean. What does it mean now? What does it mean to simplify a radical? Okay, what it means is to factor out one of these numbers. And if it's a cube root problem, then we factor out one of these numbers because these are the perfect cubes. You basically use the perfect squares and the perfect uh, cubes like we've done in the past in this section here again, but just in a different way. Okay, um, let's jump right into the first problem and I'll be able to show you exactly what I mean by this. Okay, um, what they want you to do is they want you to take 24 and they want you to factor out one of these numbers out of it if it does factor out. Now, as you guys know, 9 is not a factor of 24. If you listed out all the factors of 24, 9 would not be one of them. Same thing with 16. And then any number that's bigger than 24 cannot be a factor of 24. As you guys know, if you make out a list of factors of 24, you're not going to have any numbers bigger than 24 on it. Okay, you're going to have 1 and 24, and you're going to have 2 and 12, and 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. Okay, those are the kinds of numbers that are factors, right? So what you do is you go through this list, and you say, um, which one of these are factors of 24, and then you pick the biggest one. It has to be the biggest one in order to completely simplify the problem. Now, 1 will work with anything, but here's the problem with 1. If I factor that out, it's not going to change it at all. Okay, if you factor 1 out of 24, the 24 is still going to be there. The goal here is to make the 24 smaller. Okay, so yes, 1 would work, but we're never going to do uh, 1 because it's not going to make it any smaller. That's the goal here. So do any of these other bigger numbers work? Yeah, actually 4 is a factor of 24, right? Okay. But it has to be the biggest one. So you have to ask yourself, does 9 work? Does 16 work? They don't, but you got to at least check. Okay, and then everything else after that is too big. Okay, you don't ever have to check a number that's bigger than the number that they ask you to simplify because, again, 
uh, we're looking for factors here, and factors can't be bigger than 24, okay, or bigger than whatever number you're given. So here's what you do. Four is the number we're going to pick. Four is the number we have to pick. So what you do is you go like this. You go four times six. It still has to equal 24. That's why I have to put the six there, okay? But you're factoring the four out of the 24, but it still has to be equal. So that put the six there as well. Say four times six so that it still equals. And then there's this rule here at the top of the page that it tells us what to do next. It says that if you have two numbers being multiplied together or two terms being multiplied together inside of your radical, okay, you can split it up into two separate radicals with those same two numbers as long as they're being multiplied. You can't do with this. You can't do this with addition and subtraction. Okay, if it was a plus b or a minus b, you wouldn't be able to split it. But if it's just two numbers being multiplied together or two terms being multiplied together, then you can split it with multiplication in between the two brand new radicals that you created here. Let's try that here. So we get what? Square root of four times square root of six. Okay, and you don't need to put that dot there. It'll be implied that you're multiplying just by having nothing in between, but I'm just going to do that here the first few times, okay? The last step you got to do is going back to what we did in the last section. Okay, if you do this correctly, you should always end up with a uh, radical here that has a perfect square underneath it. If you have a square root radical with a perfect square underneath it, you can and should figure out what the square root is. Okay, all these numbers had perfect squares underneath it, right? Or perfect cubes if it was a cube root radical. Okay, and so I was able to figure out the, what the radical was equal to. That's going to happen. If you do this correctly, it's going to happen every single time on these current problems that you can figure out the square root or cube root, if it's a cube root problem, of this first radical. After you split it into two separate radicals, you should be able to figure this out. Okay, it should be either a perfect square if it's a square root or a perfect cube if it's a cube root. So what is the square root of 4? It is 2, right? So you figure that out and then you keep the other radical the same. Okay, you're pretty much done now. Okay, and if you factored out the largest thing that you possibly could here on the first part here, this should be completely simplified, but just to double check your answer, okay, just to make sure it's completely simplified, what you do is you look at the brand new number that's underneath the radical, which is 6. Okay, can you simplify that further? In other words, can you pick out a number? Can you pick, here it is. Can you pick out a number on this list other than 1 that you can factor out of, uh, of 6? Okay, because remember, 1 is not going to make it smaller. Okay, so that doesn't count. We're not going to ever do one. But can I factor four out of six? No, I can't. Uh, and then the rest of these are too big. So they're too big to be factors of six. Okay, but four doesn't work, and one is never going to be done. And so that means that six cannot be broken down to anything smaller by factoring something out from the list. Yes, I know that you could factor two or three out of six, but... That's not on the list. You're only supposed to factor out perfect squares out of square roots when you're simplifying the radicals. If they ask you to simplify, and it's a square root, it's got to be just numbers on the perfect square list that you're factoring out. Okay? And you got to pick the biggest one, but I'm just double checking here. So I know that this is completely simplified because the radical cannot be broken down to anything smaller because the only perfect square uh, factor, the only factor from the perfect square list that you can factor out of six is one. And so if you get to your final answer and the only number on the list that you can factor out of the number that you ended up with underneath the radical, if the only number you can factor out of it is one, then you know that you have completely simplified it. And so the problem is done. Okay, let's try that again. Problem B. Just like in the last one, and I know there's this negative 5 here. I'll show you what to do with that, okay? But let's focus right now on the 96, though. Okay, just like in the last problem, you look since it's a square root problem, we look at our list. Okay, again, we're not counting 1, right? 
but four, is that a factor of 96? Yes, it is. If you put that in your calculator, the way to figure out if something's a factor, you take the number divided by the potential factor that you're wondering about, 96 divided by four, and since uh, it does divide evenly, okay, because you would get 24 on your calculator if you did that, 96 divided by four is 24. That means that 96 can be broken down. Don't write this down though, because this may not be the biggest one. This may not be the right choice. But this has a possibility of working because 4 and 24 equal 96. Just like 4 and 6 equal 24 due to the fact that 4 was a factor. So 4 is a factor of 96 because 4 times 24 is 96. Again, don't write this down yet though because 4 may not be the largest one. You've got to pick the largest one. Okay, But that's something that we need to consider uh, before we go looking for something that might be even bigger than 4. Does 9 work? 96 divided by 9. No, that doesn't uh, divide evenly in your calculator. You get a decimal answer. Okay, it's not a whole number. 16. Actually, that works. If you do 96 divided by 16 in your calculator, okay, you end up getting 6, which means that 16 times 6 is 96. Okay. Is that the biggest one that works? Well, let's see. 25 and that's not going to work okay and you could try all of these i'll tell you right now 25 36 49 64 81 all of those are not going to work you can try it you doing the same thing 96 divided by 25 it's not equal to a whole number 96 divided by 36 is not equal to a whole number you can try them all out on your calculator they don't work and so 16 must be the largest thing so what we do is, and I'll put the negative 5 in front, keep on bringing the negative 5 down here, okay? We're not going to do anything with that until the end, all right? Um, but the 96 becomes 16 times 6. Just keep on bringing that negative 5 down, though. You don't need to do anything with it right now. Then we do the same thing as we did in the last problem. We split it up like this okay just like I did there you're allowed to do that because 16 and 6 are being multiplied together so the rule the rule at the top of the page says you can split it and then you figure out what the first radical is equal to because it should be a normal perfect square number underneath the square root radical that means you can figure out the root you don't need a calculator okay it's just one of those perfect square numbers that you can figure out the radical, figure out what the square root is equal to without needing a calculator. And as you guys know, the square root of 16 is equal to 4. And since that says negative 5 times a radical, this is now negative 5 times 4. Like that. Okay. You don't need to put that dot there anymore. Um, but again, you can if you want. It's not wrong if you keep it there. Okay, so we did it. We uh, split it up like I did over here in this problem in the two separate radicals, and then you figure out the first radical that has a perfect square underneath it, and then the second radical stays the same. We did that same thing here. We figured out the first radical, the second radical stays the same. The last thing we got to do because of the negative 5, okay, here's the thing. If you have a problem where you're trying to simplify the radical, but there's a regular regular term not a radical but just a regular term out in front of it okay what you do is you keep on bringing that regular term down until you have simplified the radical completely meaning you figured out the first radical and the second part stays the same that that thing that we did on the last problem same thing here that same process and then once you do that I'll tell you more about why this is true later but if you already have a part that's outside the radical being multiplied by the radical, which is the case here with negative 5, and then you simplify the radical, okay, the new outside part, which is 4, gets multiplied by the old outside part to kind of condense the answer down a little bit more. But don't ever multiply something outside of a radical by something inside of a radical. You're not allowed to do that. Okay. Um, and so... Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, and so it ends up being negative 20 radical 6.
Okay, so you can do negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, but you're not allowed to do negative 20 times radical 6 because you can't do outside times inside. You can't do outside of the radical times the inside of the radical. Not allowed. Okay, so that's as far as you can take it right there. Okay? So that's what you do if you have a term on the outside of the radical and they ask you to simplify the radical. Just multiply the old outside part at the beginning of the problem by the new outside part that you get after you simplify the radical. And this is what you get. Okay, so I'd like you to try right now. Um, on the second page, got some problems for you to try. Just try one and two right now. Don't do the other problems yet. Some of them have cube roots. Some of them have variables. We haven't talked about either one of those things yet. Okay, so just try one and two here. They're very similar to what we just did in A and B. Okay, hit the play button after that and let's see how you did. Okay, let's take a look at number one. Uh, number one, um, <clears throat> Lots of factors there from the list, okay? Remember, you got to factor out the largest thing from this list right here uh, that's a factor of 72. Well, 4 works. 4 times 18 is 72. However, 9 also works because 9 times 8 is 72. But is that the biggest thing? Actually, the biggest thing is 36 times 2. Okay, now... Um, you might be wondering, well, is it that big of a deal if I say I pick like 9, say I pick 9 and 8, okay? Say I pick 9 and 8, and, and then you go through the process here. You split it apart like we did in the first two problems, okay? And then the first one becomes 3 because you're supposed to figure out the first part and keep the second part the same. Here's the problem with this answer. You can see I crossed that out over here. Here's the problem with this answer. I can simplify square root of 8 still. This is not completely simplified because I could, I could factor out a 4 out of the 8 right there. If you're able to factor out a number from the list other than 1, then that means you didn't simplify it completely. So in that case, go back and figure out the bigger thing that you missed, okay? Because if you factor out nine, you didn't get the biggest thing. You got something that worked, but it wasn't the biggest thing that works. Okay, the biggest thing that works is 36. 36 and two. That is the biggest number you can factor out from the list here. And that's what you need to do in order to completely simplify it. So be careful there. It's really easy to make that mistake. You find a number that works and you think, hey, great, I found a number that works. Okay, but you need to pick the biggest one that works. Otherwise, you're going to get a final answer where the radical is still not completely simplified. It's partially simplified, but not completely. Let's go, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens here. If I split that apart, like I learned in the previous two problems, I get that right there. Again, you don't need that dot in between there. It's already implied since the radicals are right next to each other, that um, it's being multiplied without the dot. So the dot is optional. And then we, like we just talked about on the front, you uh, figure out what the radical is equal to on the first one, and you keep the second one the same. Square root of 36 is 6, and then the radical stays the same on the second part. There's your final answer right there. Next one. 50. What's the largest number from the list? It's a factor of 50. Okay, well, the only one that works, not and counting one, of course, the only one that even works is 25, and so that must be the biggest one then since it's the only one. Okay, so I use that. Remember, bring down the outside 2 like we did with the negative 5 on the front side of the sheet. Just bring that down. Split up 50 into 25 and 2. Then split up the radicals. Okay, Can, again, keep that outside too there. And then, as always, figure out what the first radical is equal to and keep the second radical the same. So, so there's the 5. And then, like we talked about in problem B on the front, when you have an old outside part, an original outside part here that was at the beginning of the problem on the outside, when you simplify the radical, multiply the old outside part times the new outside part, keeping that final radical the same right there, and we end up with 10 radical 2. 10 radical 2. Okay, so that is how you simplify a square root radical. All right. 
thankfully, if you do a cube root radical, it's almost identical. In fact, the process really is completely identical. The only difference is that we uh, have to use a different list. Let me pull out my list here for cube roots. Okay, so when you have a perfect, or pardon me, when you have a cube root, um, such as down here, I'll get back to those other problems here in just a moment. Okay, but when we have um, cube roots, as you can see here, um, it's the process is again is exactly the same. Okay, uh, the only difference is that you look at this list now because this is the perfect cube list. But you're still doing the same thing. You're still looking for the largest number that you can factor out from the list. All right. And then you split it up into two separate radicals, and then you figure out the first radical. All the same process. It's just uh, make sure that you're looking at the correct list. So for cube roots, you're looking at the perfect cube list. For square roots, you're looking at the perfect square list. All right. So for 48, what's the largest number on this list that factors out of 48, that is a factor of 48? Not counting the 1, like we said. That, that, that doesn't count. That's not going to get us anywhere. It's not going to make it smaller. This, is 8 a factor of 48? Yes, it is. 8 times 6 is 48. Is 27 a factor of 48? No, it's not. 48 divided by 27 is a decimal number in your calculator. It's not a whole number. It's not a factor then. And then these numbers are too big to be factors, aren't they? So it must be 8. 8 must be the correct choice. Okay. Now, real big thing here, and we're going to see this a lot here in the next couple of sections, okay, as you're doing a cube root and you're simplifying it, you're doing work with it, okay, we didn't have to worry about this in the last section because it was just a one-step answer, one-step problem. But when you're working with cube roots, you got to remember to, you know, when you bring this down, you guys, you got to remember, I'll put the 8 and the 6 in there like we're supposed to, uh, because 8 times 6 is 48. But you have to remember the little 3 here. Okay, that's a big uh, thing that students struggle with is they forget to bring the little 3 down. And why is that important? It's because if you don't bring down the 3, it's going to look like a square root. So you don't want to change it from a cube root to a square root. You're not allowed to do that. It's still a square root. It's still a cube root problem. And so if you forget to write the 3, you've changed it now. Okay, so really discipline yourself to make sure to not forget that when it's a cube root problem, you got to bring down that little three, okay, to make sure that it's still a cube root problem. Okay, speaking of that, we now know that we need to split this just like we did before. And yes, you can do that with cube roots as well. If you got a little three on the outside, you can split it up into two separate radicals. But look at what I got here. Notice that the two brand new radicals are also cube roots as well. So again, as you write down that new step here where you split the radicals into two, all right, again, you have to remember to split it apart. Of course, you're supposed to, yeah, I mentioned that already, but what I meant to say was you, you got to remember to bring down the threes. You got to remember to bring down the threes, all right? One cube root splits up into two cube roots. You don't again if you don't put the threes there, it's going to look like square roots now, and that's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be cube roots still. Then, just like we've been doing in the previous problems, after you split it up into two separate radicals, you compute the first radical, just like we did in section 9.1. What is the cube root of eight? It is equal to two, and then the second radical stays the same. Make sure that that 3 is on top of the V right there. If you put the 3, if you write the 3 a little bit too far over, it's going to look like you're trying to take 2 to the 3rd power. Okay. And then the radical has a 6 underneath it. Again, that should be completely simplified. All right. Because we did the largest number we factor out the largest number if you, if you factor out the largest thing it should be already completely simplified but if you want to double check uh, again the six is completely simplified you can't break it down to something smaller because one is the only perfect cube factor it's the only perfect cube from the perfect cube list that you can factor out a six it's the only one all the other numbers are too big okay all right 
So this is done. So again, same thing, you guys, that we did in the square root problems up here. Same thing. Okay, you factor out the largest thing. You split it up into two radicals. You figure out the first radical, you're done. Okay, and then if there's a, an original outside part, then you combine that. On, you do one more step to combine that like we did here. Okay, but it's the same thing with cube roots. It's just a different list. So please try right now. Um, if you go back to that second sheet again here. Let me pull it out here again. Problems three and four. Three and four right here. Okay. Um, figure out the, uh, how to simplify those. Again, because they're both cube roots, you're using this list. Okay, hit the play button after that. We'll see how those answers came out. Okay, number three. What's the largest number? Since this is a cube root, I'm going to look at the perfect cube list, not the perfect square list. What's the largest number on this list? It's a factor of 54. Uh, again, not counting one. Eight is not a factor of 54, but 27 is. And the other numbers are too big. So the correct choice must be 27. So I factor out the 27. 27 times 2 is 54. Don't forget to get the 2 in there. So it's still equal to 54 when you multiply it. Um, and then we split up the radicals. Again, notice that I'm bringing my little 3s down into each radical here. Okay. Very important. And then um, last step is to figure out what the first radical is equal to. The cube root of 27 is 3, and then the second radical, like we talked about, stays the same. All right. Number four, same thing. What's the largest perfect? What's the largest factor from the perfect cube list that you can factor out of 24? Uh, eight works, right? Eight times three is 24, but the other numbers are too big, right? So eight must be the correct thing. I factor that out. I get 8 times 3. Okay. Uh, then I do the normal thing. I split it up into two separate radicals. And then I figure out what the first radical is equal to. Okay. So that same three-step process. Figure out the, the biggest thing. Okay. Write it out. Split it into two separate radicals. Figure out the first radical. Okay. That's what simplifying radicals is all about. Those three steps. Now, um, what we haven't talked about yet, as I go back to the clean sheet of paper that I've been working on here, what we haven't talked about yet is variables. What do we do with that? You'll see here, starting in problem C, as I go back to the ones that have variables in it here, um, C and D and E and F, for that matter, as well, have variables in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at each part separately here. You, if you have a coefficient and then a variable, you're going to look at uh, the coefficient separately and then each variable separately as well. Okay, so let's start out with 20. Okay, since this is a square root problem, all right, we're back to looking at the perfect squares again. What's the largest number on this list that you can factor out of 20? Wouldn't that be 4? Okay. And yes, I know that 4 times 5 is 20. You don't have to write down the 5 yet, though, because I still need to do something with the x9 there. I want to talk about variables here for a second, though. Okay. When you figure out, when you look at this list right here, here's your variables and their exponents. Remember we said you want to factor out the largest thing from the list that's a factor of uh, what you're looking at, in this case, x to the ninth. So what's the largest thing on this list that I can factor out of x9? Well, remember, again, you can't, remember we kept on talking about how with coefficients, uh, numbers that are bigger than the number you're looking at can't be factors of that number. Well, it's the same thing with exponents, okay? For example, with x9, x10 is too big, but x8 is not x6 is not, x4 is not. As long as the exponent is smaller than or equal to the 9, that's a factor. It doesn't have, it has nothing to do with uh, 8 being a factor of 9. It doesn't work that way with exponents, okay? Just so long as the exponent is smaller than or equal to the 9, then that's a factor. 
So x to the 8th is a factor of not x to the 9th. x to the 6th also is a factor of x to the 9th. And so are these. As long as the exponent is smaller than or equal to, it's a factor. So x10 and x12, those are not eligible. But all four of these are. So as you can see there, the biggest one out of those four, because we're supposed to pick the biggest one, right? The biggest one out of those four is x to the 8th. Okay, now that I've done the 20 and the x to the 9th, okay, I'm now ready to figure out what that's being multiplied by in order to, remember, it still has to be equal to the 20x9, so you got to put this second part in here, just like I've been doing on these other problems where I put the 6 here. I didn't just put the 16. So 4x to the 8th times what is equal to 20x to the 9th? Okay. This is just like if you were factoring 4x to the 8th out of a out of a GCF problem or something, and you had to fill in the correct term on the inside of the bracket. Okay. Um, isn't it true that 4 times 5 is 20? And isn't it also true that x to the 8th times x to the 1st? Because when you multiply terms together, you have to add the exponents. Okay, so x to the first is the correct thing to put in there so that these two things together are still equal to 20x to the ninth. Okay, so make sure the coefficients equal 20. Make sure that the x's equal x to the ninth, and we know that they do because 8 plus 1 is 9. Okay, again, just like doing a GCF problem. We then split these apart. And then after we split it apart, what do we always do? We always figure out what the first radical is equal to. Okay, this is going to be kind of like section 7.4 when we were factoring. Um, yeah, I've got it right here, actually, just to give you a visual. Okay. Remember when we were doing these problems here again where... Um, if you had like 49p squared and we had to fill in the bracket there, if you had, uh, uh, say for example, um, 4x squared, you had to fill in the bracket here, what you were doing is you were figuring out what the square roots were. Okay, so let's just say in a similar way, what is the current thing I need to figure out? The current thing I need to figure out is 4x to the 8th, right? i got to figure out the square root of that. So that means I need to figure out the positive term that when I square it, it's equal to 4x to the 8th. Okay, well, it's just like this right here, all right? The positive thing so that when you square it, it's equal to 4x to the 8th, just like what we were doing here. What would go in there? What would go inside that little bracket? 2x to the 4th, right? Because 2 squared is 4. And then when you have a bracket taken to a power, you multiply the exponents. So 4 must be the correct exponent so that when you multiply by 2, you get 8. So the square root of 4x to the 8th is 2x to the 4th. Okay. So it's the same process. It's just that we have to go through a little bit more work because of the variable. Okay, same thing here in problem D. You have a coefficient and then you have a variable part. So just like in problem C, we have to do one part at a time. Okay, let's start out with 45. 45. What's the largest thing on the perfect square list that factors out of 45? Wouldn't that be 9? Okay, and then what about for P17? Remember, as long as the exponent is smaller, it's a factor, or it could even be equal to. Okay, so we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, as we know, it doesn't really stop at 10, does it? After that, it's x12, x14, x16, x18. Let me go ahead and write that down to x16 and x18 right here. x16 is the largest one, okay? It's the largest one that's not bigger than 17, okay? Because the next one is uh, 18, and that's too big, right? Okay, let me get this out of the way here. And so um, x16 is the largest one that's not too big, the largest exponent that is not too large. Okay, so we're going to use not x to the 16, but p to the 16. All right. 
But what's important here, you can use that. It, this could be any variable depending on the problem. In this problem, it's P. But what's important is the exponents. Pick the largest exponent that's not bigger than. It could be equal, but it cannot be bigger than the one that you're given here in the problem. So P16. Okay, what do I got to multiply by in order to get it still equal to this? 9 times 5 is 45, so 5's got to go in there. And then P to the first, right? Because 16 plus 1 is 17. Okay, so it looks a lot like the last problem here. It's just that it's a different letter. Split it apart. Like that. And then, as always, after we split it up into two separate radicals, what is the square root of 9p to the 16th? In other words, what is the positive term that uh, when you square it, it's equal to 9p16? Make sure to put that bracket there, like we did in 9.1, uh, in order to uh, make sure that you know exactly what uh, uh, is being squared completely to equal this. Okay, whatever you pick, that whole thing has got to equal... That whole thing, when you square it, has got to be equal to this. So wouldn't that be 3p to the 8th? 3 squared is 9. 8 times 2 is 16. Right? So my final answer is 3p to the 8th. Again, the second radical stays the same, as always. And there you go. Okay. Next problem is basically the same thing. It's just that it's got a second variable, but it's the same idea. We do one variable at a time. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay. So we got three parts here, the coefficient, the M, and then the N. So if you've got more than one variable, just do one part at a time, the coefficient first, and then each variable separately. Let's take a look at what happens. What's the largest uh, thing on the list that factors out of 36? Wouldn't that be 36? Remember, the number itself is a factor. It's just that the number is bigger than 36. It cannot be factors. But the number itself can and always is a factor of, of itself. 36 is a factor of 36. So that's going to go in there. Okay, what does that get multiplied by? Uh, well, now we got to get to the variable part. Okay, remember, you want when you get to the variable part, you pick in the largest exponent on the list. It has to be on the list. You can't just pick like x to the third or x to the fifth or something. The largest exponent on the list that is not bigger than 7. That would be m to the sixth, wouldn't it? Because the next number after m6 would be m8 right here, and that would be too big. How about n10? The largest exponent for 10 would be 10 itself. It's on here. Remember, it's okay to pick the same exponent. Okay? Uh, you just can't pick one that's bigger. So n10 is a factor of n10. The same exponent, that's still a factor. Okay, you just can't pick something bigger. So don't pick n12 or n14. So that definitely is the biggest one. Because the next one, n12, is too big. What does this get multiplied by so that it's still equal to this here? Well, 36 times 1, you don't have to write the 1 here because there's going to be something else after that, but I'll just write that there for emphasis here. 36 times 1 is 36. And then we need m to the first here, don't we? Because m6 times m to the first, m to the first, 6 plus 1 gives me an exponent of 7. But when you factor n10 out of n10, and we saw this back when we were doing GCF problems, okay, if you factor out the same exponent uh, that you already have, don't put that same letter in there again. Okay, so if you factor n10 out of n10, there should not be another n here. If you put another n here, you would then have to have, uh, like if you just put n here, n to the first, then it would have to be n11 right here. Well, that's not right. Okay. Since you had a variable here, you don't need to put the 1, okay? Because 1 times m is just the same thing as writing m by itself, okay? But I wrote it there. Uh, it's no big deal. Um, you could do it if you want, either way. So I split this apart. And again, like I said, 
you don't have to write the one there. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get rid of it on this step. But again, if you want to keep the one, that's fine. And then what is the radical equal to? That first radical. What are you squaring to equal 36 M6 N10? What is the uh, square root of that? Well, 6 squared is 36. And then you need M to the third because 3 times 2 gives you the 6 here. And then you need N to the fifth because 5 times 2 is 10. So it must be equal to 6 M to the third N to the fifth. And again, the second radical stays the same. Okay. So if you've got more than one variable, just do one variable at a time. Okay. This next one here is a special problem here. Uh, it's a lot shorter problem, but let me help you uh, realize why that is so that you can recognize it in your homework or maybe even on an exam question if it comes up. Okay, notice that each part, the coefficient and the variable part, notice that each part is already on the list. It, it, you don't have to just look for a factor of it. It's already completely on there. The 9 is on there. The uh, the R to the 12th is on there, just like X12 would be on here. Okay, in other words, the exponent 12 is on there. Um, since each part is on there, you can just figure out what the square root of this is right away. You don't have to split it up into different parts. This only happens if each part is on there. If the 9 was on the list but the R12 wasn't, that would be different. Then you would still have to go through this process here. But if each part is already on the list, it's just a simple one-step problem where you just figure out what the square root is right now. No need to split it. Okay. Um, so what is the square root of um, 9 out of the 12th? What do you square to get 9R to the 12th here. Wouldn't that be 3R to the 6th? 6 times 2 is 12. And then, of course, 3 squared is 9. So the final answer there is just a simple one-step problem, 3R to the 6th. Okay? All right. So that's how you do square root radicals when you have variables. As you can imagine at this point, the cube root problems, when you have variables in them, will be similar, okay? Just like they were before, the cube root problems are, they have exactly the same process. It's just that what are you doing now? You are looking at a different list. That's the only difference between simplifying a square root and simplifying a cube root. You're just simply looking at a different list. I know I've said that a lot of times now. Pardon me if I'm over-repeating myself there. Um, so, looking at this new list now, what's the largest thing on this list that I can factor out of 81? And then I'll do the R11 separately, just like I've been doing with the square roots. Coefficient and the variables go separate from each other. So 81, can't I factor out the uh, 27? Because 27 times 3 is 81, right? And that is the largest thing that works there. The 64 doesn't work. How about the R11? Well, let's look at the exponents here. We would have R to the 3rd, R to the 6th, R to the 9th, but R to the 12th is too big, right? So R to the 9th is the largest thing that's not bigger than 11. Okay, the largest exponent that is not bigger than the exponent you already have. So R to the 9th is what I'm going to factor out. Okay. What do, you, do we still have to multiply by here in order for it to still be equal? Remember, when you simplify something, you guys, it's still got to be equal. That's why I keep on saying it's still got to be equal. Okay? You're just putting it in a more simple uh, format. That's what it means to simplify. But it's still equal. 27 times 3 is the 81 up here. And then you know that 9 plus 2 is 11. So we got to have r to the second power here. Okay, so that the R9 and R2 equal R11. And then we split it. Don't forget to bring down your little threes there to indicate that you still have cube roots here. Okay, like this. 
Okay. And then, um, as always, after you split it, you then uh, figure out what the first radical is equal to. What is being cubed, not squared this time because this is a cube root problem. What is being cubed, all right, in order to equal 27 or 9? Wouldn't that be 3 because 3 to the 3rd is 27? And wouldn't it be r to the 3rd because 3 times 3 gives you the exponent 9? And so, therefore, the first radical is equal to 3r to the 3rd. Lots of 3s in this problem, isn't there? Okay. Lots of 3s. Okay. Got one more down here, and then I'll have you guys try some more again. Okay, once again, it's a cube root, so we're looking at the list, the perfect cube list. What's the largest number uh, that I can factor out of uh, 32 on the coefficient uh, column here? Wouldn't it be 8? Because 27 doesn't work, right? And then how about y to the 4th? Okay, well, you can't pick an exponent that's bigger than 4, but you want to pick the biggest exponent on the list that uh, is uh, not bigger than 4, though. Okay. Um, and so 3 would be it, right? Y to the 3rd. The largest exponent on the list that's not bigger than the exponent that you're given. And we got what? Wouldn't that be 4Y to the 1st? so that it's still equal to 32 y to the fourth. So then we what? Then we split it into two separate radicals, bring down your little threes like we've been talking about. And then final answer here, you got to figure out what that first radical is equal to. Okay, I'll just put it down here. Uh, that is equal to two y to the first, isn't it? Because if I cube 2y to the first, isn't that equal to 8y to the third? And so therefore, the cube root of 8y to the third is 2y. And I put that down here. Second radical, as always, stays the same. And there you go. You might be thinking, hey, wait a second, can't I factor something out of 4? Does that mean that this isn't simplified? Now, if you're thinking that, please be careful because you're thinking of the wrong list if you're thinking that. Remember, we're doing the, this list, and so 4 is not on this list. I know it's on the square list, but it's not on the cube list. So just be careful to not get your lists mixed up. Okay? All right. What I'd like you to do right now is, um, what do we got left here? We got 5 through 8, okay, let me zoom out, there we go. We got 5 through 8 on the back side that we haven't done yet. I'm going to ask you, to, we're going to do a couple more problems that I'm just going to write down on the paper at the very end of this video uh, that are kind of different than what we've seen, so I want to make sure you see it. But first of all, do 5 through 8. We'll then do those last two problems, and then we'll wrap things up here in 9.2. So uh, hit the play button when you're done with 5 through 8, and we'll take a look at that. All right, number 5. You see there's three parts here, a coefficient and a couple variables. So we start out with the 12. Okay, and what's the largest thing on the perfect square list we can factor out of 12? That would be 4, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, so I put the 4 here. Let me cover up the rest of that just so we can focus on one thing at a time here. What can I uh, factor out of x to the third from the list? Again, the largest, the largest exponent that's not bigger than 3. But it's got to be an exponent on the list, of course. So that would be x to the second, wouldn't it? Because x4 is too big. So I factor out x to the second. How about y to the fifth up here? Again, the largest exponent on the list that's not bigger than 5 would be 4. And so I factor out y to the 4th. Okay, what's left after I factor out those things? 3x to the 1st, y to the 1st. I then split those up. And then I figure out the 
the square root of 4x squared y to the fourth. Like always, I do that with the first radical there. And it ends up being equal to 2xy squared. And there it is right there. So like always, you figure out the first radical, you keep the second part, you keep the second radical the same. Number six, as I mentioned, if you have, uh, if each part is already on the list, 36 and the exponent 8 is already, both of those are already on the list, then it just becomes a one-step problem. You don't have to go through the three steps. Just figure out what the square root of this thing is. You'll be able to do that if each part is on the list. And you get 6x to the fourth, don't you? Because if you square that, if you square that, you get 36x to the eighth. Okay. Number seven. Again, same process, different list. Cube roots, starting out with the 40. Okay, we can factor in eight out of that. Okay, and then for uh, x to the fifth, x to the sixth would be too big. So the largest thing on the list that's not bigger than 5 would be x to the third. Factor that out. What's left? What's left is 5x squared. You can see that. It, you see what I did there? I actually split up the radicals now. If you think about it, you guys, and I didn't want to do that at first because I wanted you to get used to the uh, how the process uh, officially works so you understand it. But I'm okay from now on if you actually jump from, say, this step all the way down to this step, or this step all the way down to this step, all right? Because you can see that the numbers are not going to change. It's just that uh, it splits up, okay? So if you want to just take the 8 and the 3, for example, and drop it all the way down to here without writing this step right here, that's fine. Same thing with the 27 and the 2. If you just want to drop it down to this step without writing that second part there, that's fine, okay? Um, and so that's what I did here. All right. Now that we've seen it enough times, I think we're used to the whole process. And so I'm going to, uh, encourage you. You don't have to, you can still write out all the steps if you want, but you can skip that first step if you want, because it's not really going to change anything, uh, from what it's eventually going to end up with on this line here. Okay. The numbers, like I said, the terms, they stay the same. 8x to the third and 5x squared. And then I ended up getting 2x here for the first radical because if you cube that, it's equal to 8x to the third. That's number seven. Finally, number eight. Once again, we have another one of those problems where each thing is on the list already. 27 and x to the sixth are already on the list. So this is another one of those one-step problems. You don't need to do the three-step process. Okay. And it just ends up being equal to 3x squared. Final answer. Okay, which is why I circled it there. And it's all because when you cube 3x squared, it's equal to the inside of the radical. And so that's the cube root. So that's it for 5 through 8. There's a couple more problems I wanted to show you. Just please write them down on your uh, paper or if you printed out the sheet here, write it down on the sheet either way. Uh, but let's just add a couple more problems because these involve some... Uh, things that happen that you'll see occasionally, but you have not seen them yet in this worksheet. And so I just wanted to add these to what we already have so that you'll know how to handle uh, the situations that arise in, the, in these last two problems here, 9 and 10. Okay, um, let me go back to my clean sheet of paper here. So I can, I'm going to go ahead and write it out here. So 9 and 10. Um, let's just go through the normal process and then I'll show you the things that uh, come up that we haven't seen before. Since this is a square root, okay, um, we're looking at the numbers on the perfect square list. Let me pull up my list here again. There we are. And so wouldn't 9 be the largest one? But here's the thing though. X to the first is too small, isn't it? Don't try to pull anything out. In other words, if the exponent, if the exponent is smaller than even the smallest exponent you have, you can't factor anything out of the x, out of this x over here. When that happens, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Okay? So if you can't factor anything out of the variable, just leave it alone. And so we just factored out 9 only. 
And now you do the normal thing. 9 times what is equal to 27x? That would be 3x, wouldn't it? Right. And then I know that I did, I know that I said that we can split this apart, but because these uh, this has uh, special circumstances here, I just went ahead and did this extra step. Again, you don't have to write down this step right here. You can jump right down to this step here. That's fine. Okay. But we got 9 and 3x either way. And then, as always, after we split it up into two separate radicals, we figure out the first radical. Second radical stays the same. So I just wanted you to see what would happen when you had a variable that you can't factor anything out of. Okay, I didn't want you to be completely caught by surprise if you saw that in the homework, for example. Okay, or on a test question or something. All right. Number 10. Number 10 goes even one step further than that as far as something we haven't seen before. Uh, both the 13 and the 9, you can't factor anything out of it. 13, in other words, uh, um, you can't factor 4 out of it. You can't factor 9 out of it. Everything else is too big. The only thing you can factor out of it is 1. But like I said, we don't ever do 1 because it's not going to make it smaller. And then y to the first, same thing as x to the first, okay? its exponent to the first power is smaller than even the smallest one they have we have here and you're not allowed to factor out an exponent that is bigger than what you got so since we got exponent 1 none of these are going to work okay so what happens when both parts uh, you can't factor anything out of it assu assuming that you don't count the 1 you can factor 1 out of anything but again we don't do 1 so if 1 is the only thing that would work as far as the numbers and the variables, okay, if that's the only thing that works, then that means that you cannot simplify this at all because you can't factor anything out of either part. And when that happens, this is rare, but it happens sometimes. You see this sometimes. Uh, it already is simplified. You just have to say already simplified. Okay. So that's what happens when um, both parts, or however many parts you have, if the coefficient in each variable uh, is such that you can't factor anything out of it, okay, um, again, not counting the one, uh, then it's, we just say that it's already simplified, okay, for that, for that particular radical. Okay? So that is how you simplify radicals. That's going to be a very important uh, thing to understand for the next couple of sections. Um, the, yeah, the next couple of sections for sure, maybe even a little bit after that too, but definitely the next couple of sections are uh, extremely important uh, in order to be able to do those problems. So let me know if you have any questions about it so that you're prepared not only to do this homework assignment, but also prepared to learn in the next couple of sections uh, coming up as well. Okay? All right, so you have a good day, take care, and uh, we'll see you back for section 9.3.